Welcome to EMTB videos. The old 2019 Sync Drive Pro was a nice motor. I reviewed it about a year ago. The Sync Drive Pro is based on the Yamaha PWX, which has been out since 2017. So it was time for Yamaha to update their motor. For 2020, they've introduced the PWX2. So it made sense for Giant to base their top of the line sync drive motor on the new Yamaha. Unfortunately, we didn't get the opportunity to compare the 2020 sync drive pro against the old model. Still, I'm sure I noticed a few improvements. The old motor was a tad heavier than its competitors. The motor layout was pretty much the best when the Yamaha PWX motor was released in 2017. But not too long after, the Shimano E8000 was out with an even better motor design. I'm essentially talking about the location of the crank axle. By pulling the axle as far back as possible, bike frames can be designed with shorter chainstays. This was pretty much the only negative I had to say about the old Giant Sync Drive motor. Unfortunately, this hasn't changed for 2020. I really like the power delivery of the old motor, and it's much the same with the new Sync Drive Pro. It's very quick to activate, you just need to put force on the pedals for the motor to activate. It kicks in before the pedals and the bike has even started to move. And it's equally quick to disengage. It cuts power instantly. No motor overrun that keeps pushing for a brief moment after you stopped pedaling. Even in the highest mode, the motor can activate carefully and controlled. The behavior is equal for all assistance modes. It does seem to me that the new motor is a bit more aggressive in the maximum assistance mode though. It seems to ramp up harder, and you have to pedal carefully to control it on the technical trails. I might be wrong about this though, I can't be entirely sure without testing them together. But this is my impression, and it's not really a bad thing. The new Sync Drive Pro has got a total of 6 assistance modes. One more than the 2019 motor. So you got a lot of modes to work with. The highest mode is called power. I'm just going to refer to it as 5. This mode gives you access to all the 18 Nm of torque. And it will amplify the power you apply to the pedals by 360%. For my riding, this served as a max power mode for the non-technical trail sections and when I needed a bit of rest on the transport sections. For most of the trail riding, we were in mode 3 and 4. Only mode 5 will give you access to maximum motor power. The rest is capped at 70 Nm, and that's a good thing. Mode 4 is much easier to control on the technical sections. It's still a powerful mode with its 300% amplification, and we used it for all the steep and rough climbs. Even mode 3 with its 250% amplification is powerful. You need to drop to level 1 or possibly 2 if you want to do most of the work yourself. I think having 5 modes is a good idea, and I like how they are spread out. If you're not happy with the different modes, you can allegedly tweak them with the giant ride control app. I say allegedly because I couldn't get the app to work. I'm riding an early production bike though, so I assume the app is working on the customer bikes. Anyway, now We've been through the five different assistance modes, but I said there were six. Yeah, there's a new mode for 2020. The Auto Mode. It's a dynamic mode like the Shimano Trail Mode and the Bosch EMTB Mode. And it's a more advanced mode compared to the various dynamic modes from 2018 and 2019. Giant has labeled it Pedal Plus 6 Sensor Technology. The sensors for torque, speed, Motor rotation and pedal rotation aren't anything new, but the final two are. Up until 2019, the various dynamic modes were sensing how much power you put through the pedals, and the motor would amplify the power based on how hard you were pushing. On the 2019 Bosch Performance CX, you would get between 120 and 300% amplification. The auto mode on the new giant motor will switch between modes 2, 3 and 4 giving you between 175 and 300% amplification of the power you put in. 
In addition, the motor has now got sensors for gradient and acceleration. The 2020 Bosch Performance CX has got similar sensor technology, by the way. When starting in a steep technical climb, I really liked the auto mode. The motor would sense I was going uphill and it felt as if it was starting in mode 3. When I increased the speed, it would switch to mode 4. We would have to start pedaling very carefully to make the motor start in mode 2. The motor was selecting higher amplification even though we were pedaling lightly. This is possible thanks to the gradient and acceleration sensors. The auto mode offered great control and we didn't lack power going up. But this is a steep and exhausting climb. So when I was reaching the top I really wanted to select mode 5 and keep going while sitting down and relaxing a bit. But the motor would drop down to mode 2 and getting to mode 5 was a bit of a hassle. The auto mode is at the bottom while the 5 is at the top. So I had to click 6 times to get to mode 5. And after the first click I'm in power mode 0 and the motor cuts completely. I get it. When you use auto mode, you're not supposed to be switching between modes. But that doesn't suit me. I want to have easy access to maximum motor power to ride efficiently. Because of all the clicking between auto and 5, I ended up riding a lot in mode 4. The motor control is still good in 4, and one click down to mode 3 would give me a tad more control. One click up from 4 to 5 would give me access to maximum motor power. I believe I could tweak mode 2, 3 and 4 in the app to make the auto mode better suited for my riding. Another strength of the old Sync Drive Pro was the power at low cadence, or at low pedaling frequency. It's been this way with the old Yamaha motors too, since the beginning. You can start uphill in a pretty high gear and the motor would pull you up to speed, quite impressively. But the motor was losing power at higher cadence. The old Sync Drive Pro was a bit better than the old Yamaha PWX in this regard. But during the test in 2019, I noticed the Sync Drive Pro was dropping out somewhere over 90 RPM. That wasn't a big problem on an EMTB though. This doesn't happen with the new Sync Drive Pro. I can pedal at over 110 RPM without noticing a sudden drop of motor power. So the new motor is as good as most others at high pedaling frequencies. But what about low cadence? It can't be as good as the others at high cadence and be better than them at low cadence at the same time? Hmm. Why am I asking questions I know I really can't answer? I believe the new motor is slightly less powerful than the old at low pedaling frequencies. But that's really difficult to say when I'm not comparing the motors side by side. All I can say is that it appears that the new is slightly less powerful than the old Sync Drive Pro at low cadence. And it definitely is better at high cadence. The 2020 Sync Drive Pro is pretty comparable to the 2020 Bosch Performance CX. They're both good at high cadence. And the Bosch is good at low cadence too, but I got the impression the Sync Drive Pro might be slightly better. Yeah, it's just my impression. I've got no way of knowing for sure. Motor noise isn't too bad. I believe it's slightly improved over the old motor. There's a bit of low pitch noise at low pedaling frequencies. But when we pedal faster, the noise almost disappears. I'm quite happy with the noise level actually. Walk assist was great. The first time I tested it, I was in like the fifth gear and I had trouble keeping up. So I shifted down to the second gear and all was well. I've always done an uphill test in my other motor reviews, but this test is getting a bit meaningless. All of the new top of the line EMTB motors are pushing the bike up to about 24 kilometers, where the motor ramps down before reaching the 25 kilometers per hour cutoff speed. So I found a different hill this time, and I tried riding up at low cadence. The motor got up without losing speed in the 38 to 17 ratio. 
This doesn't tell us much, but it's a benchmark for future tests. And I'm confident it's a good result because the 2020 Sync Drive Pro is still a great motor at low pedaling frequencies. So, to sum it up, the new motor is better than the old one. It's a great motor for trail riding. It can easily be controlled in technical sections, even at high motor power. It's powerful and not that noisy. And the new auto mode is really pleasant. It is probably my favorite of all the dynamic assistance modes I've ever tested on different motors. But Giant should consider putting auto above mode 5, not all the way down below mode 0. If you've made it to the end of this video, I would be thankful for a like and a subscribe.